Okay, so one more example here of finding a partial fraction decomposition. And in this case, I'm going to do 3x squared minus x plus 4 over x cubed plus 2x squared plus 6x. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to factor the denominator as much as possible. Well, certainly I see that we can pull an x out of here. And then I would have x squared plus 2x plus 6 left over. And then I think, oh, well, this is a quadratic. This could factor a little further. And then I think, well, does it factor any further? Well, to figure out if this factors any further, you could either start playing with numbers. We could always use the quadratic formula, right? We could even use the discriminant. Remember, b squared minus 4ac. Uh, this is the stuff uh, underneath the square root in the quadratic formula. Remember, if this works out to be negative, that tells me that um, our quadratic doesn't factor. And in this case, our b value would be 2, so we would have 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 6. Well, this is going to be 4 minus 24. We're going to get a negative 20 underneath there. And since we're getting a negative number underneath the radical, that tells me that it uh, doesn't factor. We say it's an irreducible quadratic. So makes you sound smart if you call it irreducible instead of just saying it doesn't factor. So, um, OK, so well, what do we do? Well, we still just kind of do the same thing as uh, in the other, the other examples when they were linear. If it doesn't factor any further, that's fine. Um, so we've got an x out here. That's a linear term. It's going to get its own little fraction. And then we have this other term that doesn't break down any further, this other factor um, of x squared plus 2x plus 6. So it's also going to get its own little fraction. But a little nuance now. We have to be careful. In our numerators, to me, I see in the denominator of our first fraction, I see, well, it's, it's a linear term, something to the first power. Something one degree less would just be a constant. So I'm just going to call that a. But in our second fraction, we have a quadratic, a degree two. I'm going to write something that's degree one in the numerator, um, something generic. So b times x, that's linear. That's one degree less. But you could have some constant you know, hanging out there with it. This would still be a linear term in the numerator. We have a quadratic term in the denominator. Um, and this is how the partial fraction decomposition works. OK, so I'm going to multiply both sides of my, uh, my equation again by basically by this denominator. So I'm going to multiply the left side by x times x squared plus 2x plus 6. So if I do that on the left side, well, they all cancel out, just like in the other examples. And we're just going to be left with our 3x squared minus x plus 4. Well, if I do it on the left side, I've got to multiply it out on the right side as well. So on the right side, again, I'm going to multiply by x times x squared plus 2x plus 6. So if I do that, uh, when I distribute all this to the first term, the x's would cancel. So we would have a times x squared plus 2x plus 6. And then we've got in parentheses bx plus c. Again, if we multiply all this stuff to that term, the x squared plus 2x plus 6 would cancel. And we would just be left with bx plus c times x. OK, so um, gotten rid of all of our fractions here. And now I'm going to do this process again of just equating coefficients. So on the left side, again, nothing to do. I'm just going to rewrite it. On the right side, I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. So if we distribute, we'll get ax squared. a times 2x, I'm going to write that as 2 times a times x. We would get plus a 6a. I have to distribute my x out on the right. So x times bx would be bx squared. And then we would get c times x. And now I'm going to do this process of sort of uh, regrouping everything together. So I see we've got an ax squared and a bx squared. So I'm going to stick the a and the b in parentheses and pull my x squared out to the right. We've got a 2ax and a cx. So that's going to give me 2a plus c times x. That'll take care of those terms. And then it looks like my only constant term in this case is going to be the 6a. And again, this is where we do our equating of coefficients. So 
The coefficient on the left in front of the x squared is a positive 3. In front of the x squared on the right, we have, well, a plus b. In front of the x on the left side, we've got a negative 1. So we'll take negative 1. The coefficient in front of the x on the right side is 2a plus c. And then last but not uh, least, our constant on the left is 4. We've got 6a on the right. So we'll set those equal to each other. And to me, this is kind of nice because I can just take this last equation and immediately divide both sides by 6. And that would give me 4 over 6, or it would give me 2 thirds as my value for a. Well, now I can take my first equation and use this information as well. So it says 3 equals a, which we figured out is 2 thirds, plus b. And now I can solve for b pretty easily. Um, so I'll take 3 minus 2 thirds. That's going to be our value for b. Well, you could multiply top and bottom by 3. We would get 9 over 3 minus 2 over 3. 9 minus 2 would be 7 over 3. That would be our, our value for b. Um, again, we've got our a value right here. Last but not least, I'm going to take my middle equation and solve for c. So we've got negative 1 equals 2 times a, which is 2 thirds, plus c. So we've got negative 1 equals 4 thirds plus c. I can subtract 4 thirds from both sides. So this is negative 3 over 3 minus 4 over 3 would be negative 7 over 3. And now we've got our c value as well. So in conclusion, it says our partial fraction decomposition, it says we had a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 6. Well, again, we figured out a, that was the very first one we found. That was 2 thirds, so that would go in the numerator. Uh, we figured out our b value. We said our b value was 7 thirds. So bx, I'm going to have 7 thirds times x. Um, and then plus c, which is going to be negative 7 thirds. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time. Um, I'm going to leave the 2 thirds x like it is. Uh, the denominator, I'm going to leave that alone, x squared plus 2x plus 6. Uh, this looks a little sloppy to me. I would be kind of picky about that in a class. I'm going to write 7 thirds times x. You know, make it completely clear that this x isn't in the denominator. Plus a negative 7 thirds, we can just write that as set, uh, minus 7 thirds. And to me, this would now be our partial fraction decomposition of that very original uh, expression that we started with.